guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're back at the original filming location for a special reason. This is that vehicle that Lori and I affectionately call Big Bertha. It's a 2022 Ford Bronco Wild Track. And guess what? Not only is it a two door, but it's also in an all new color known as Eruption Green. But before we get into this big tire off-road beast, let's talk about what's going on here. You would have to be living under a rock to not know that the Bronco is back and it's back in a very big way. It's been since 1966 that this vehicle has been around, obviously disappeared for a few years for some very interesting reasons, but as you know, it is back. Now, we've all been waiting. They've been pushing back the release dates. Now the issue is these are so hard to find because of production runs being very slow, whether it be the chip shortage or the factory shutdowns. Now, the great news is if you want a Bronco, you can order one, but which way do you go? Do you go with just a base? Or just like a Ford Mustang, there's 20 different ways from Sunday that you can buy a Ford Bronco. You can start with your base, you could go Black Diamond, you can go Outer Banks, or you can go wild track. Now, of course, the top one for 2022 is really gonna be that Bronco Raptor, but that's kind of like another story for another day. If you're going for your standard Bronco, what I wanna find out is, does the wild track bring the most for the money, depending on what you're gonna use it for, and is it the way to go with a two-door rather than going with the four-door? Let's dive into this 2022 Eruption Green Wild Track Bronco and find out. Right off the bat, the styling. I'm telling you, I want to give the Ford designers, like I've said before, high fives all the way around because they did a bang up job on bringing this awesome retro style. Now, it all starts at the front of the business, and what you're going to find is, is that interesting round headlight that is very similar to a 1966 Bronco, but you'll see that we got full LED daytime running lamp, full LED headlights and your turn signals, and they put a little twist on it so it wasn't totally the same. Now, when you go wild track, there's gonna be some gloss black accents, and I'm actually gonna zonk one of them. It's the grill. I wish the grill just came in flat black, especially if this is something that's meant as a desert runner, an off-roader. I don't know how much gloss black you really wanna have, so let me know in the comment section how you feel about the gloss black on the grill, but, I do think the style of the grill is spot on the money. You got the Bronco name, nice and bright white. We got a forward facing camera, which is so crucial for any kind of off-roading and a washer to clean the camera. You'll notice that this one has an optional, and this is a zonk because I feel like it should have came standard on the top wild track. This has an optional modular steel bumper. So this is a full metal bumper. You'll notice the screws here. These are for adding accessories. Ford has a cornucopia of accessories that they want you to accessorize your Bronco with from exterior lighting, a winch, so on and so forth. That's why those are there, but let me know how you feel. This comes with a plastic bumper. This is optional. I think it should be standard. Now you do get these freaking steel enforced, reinforced tow hooks, which are massive. I mean, it, you could almost drive through a brick house with these. That looks really good, especially for towing those lesser off-road vehicles. We do have that rectangular opening here. It is functional because this is intercooled, twin turbocharged intercooled, comes with that twin turbocharged EcoBoost engine, standard. We'll talk more about that. And then on the bottom side, Wild Track, and that just hurt my freaking hand, Wild Track comes standard with all the underbody protection. Steel, skid plates to protect all the inside goodies from getting ripped up on rocks. You're also gonna have 11.6 inches of ground clearance. That is class leading because you could go up to almost three feet of water, 34 inches of water this thing will haul through and keep on trucking. We have, with the beefed up control arms, you do get Bilstein dampers, all four corners, those bright yellow shock absorbers, and that's gonna give you perfect shock absorber quality all the time with wheel travel. You got a class leading approach angle 
and departure angle when you're going up and over the berms and rocks and everything else. Now, when we get up onto that masculine, that muscular hood, it is a masculine hood on top of that, you do get your bulge. This one has the optional graphics kit. So you're gonna get your anti-glare strip on the hood, right on top of the bulge with the wild track name. That's gonna cut down on the glare entering the windshield. The classic look, that retro style is spot on the money, especially with these two holders here. You could actually support up to 150 pounds on these two raised portions on the fenders. And then as we come around the bend, standard on the wild track. Because remember, we're talking about black diamond, we're talking about outer banks or the base. What do we get standard? Standard, you're gonna get these massive fender flares, which are easily removable with these nice little kind of clips. You take them off and this will come right off. And then as we drop down, you're getting the off-road duty equip wheels. These are beadlock wheels, 17 inch gloss black to match the grill. And they're wrapped with those Goodyear Wrangler tires, but they don't call them Goodyear Wranglers. Ford, remember, had them remove the Wrangler name, had Goodyear remove the Wrangler name because of Jeep Wrangler, duh. But these are 35 inch tires. Basically the Wild Track comes standard with the Sasquatch package, which are the bigger tires and the suspension. Now you'll notice the extra shielding that they put in the sidewall to protect it. And then up top is the control arm and you'll see a little bit of the yellow shock absorber with the spring wrapped around it. Those are those Bilstein dampers. But other than that, it gives it the perfect look from the side of the vehicle. Now, as we come down the side, the way that they indented this body line just had that classic look. You get what I like to call the badge of honor. Each Bronco has its trim on the fender. This is Wild Track with the Sasquatch. There is Bigfoot. Maybe we'll make a review tracking down Bigfoot. Maybe we'll finally capture him and take him on throttle in this Ford Bronco. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to recant. I'm gonna take back, I'm gonna retract a zonk. On previous Bronco reviews, I actually zonked the side mirror because I did not like the way that they're attached to the front of the Bronco. Designers and engineers actually did this on purpose. Think about it. Bronco doors come off, these stay on. And I don't know if you've ever driven a Jeep Wrangler, which I have without the doors on, it's a pain in the butt to drive them without the mirrors. Makes it a little cumbersome. So it's nice that you get to keep the mirrors, but take the doors off. The shorty, shorty, the short size of this beast from front to rear, I think that's what I fell in love with, with a two-door Bronco over the longer four-door Bronco. But we have flat black on the door handles. You do have keyless entry. There's the second part of the uh, decal set with the Wild Track logo and the mountain range. Nothing too gaudy, just tasteful enough. Another zonk that I have is that this should have been delivered standard with rock sliders. It's an accessory, you could add them on, but as you can see it, not only does it look unfinished, but you have no protection for when you're gonna do any rock crawling. Working your way towards the rear, they worked out the bugs. There was a big issue on the supplier with the hard tops, they were actually crumbling and falling apart the finish. They worked out the bugs. I do like the flat gunmetal gray, that nice large corner window. And then you can see just how much ground clearance you have for all that wheel travel between the top of the tire, inside the fender. We get to the back, they did a great job on the full LED lighting and it's in the shape of a B, B for Bronco, flat black. Here's the other zonk. Like I said, you had an option in the bumpers. They only give you one. You got an option in both separately at a separate cost. So this is the plastic bumper that comes standard on the Wild Track. There's, a, there's supposed to be a plastic front one, but like I said, this has been optioned with the modular steel bumper. You do have your wiper. I like the way they hit it. Your third brake light. You got the glass that flips up. You'll notice the Bronco logo in gloss black, just like the grill. And then working our way down, this one's finished off with the optional trailer package. So this gives you your full towing capability. We'll talk about numbers. You have an electronic limited slip out back, Dana 44 axles, two speed transfer case, and a locking front diff. So this definitely could do the off-road business, but why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering this Bronco. Right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a prop rod. I am gonna zonk that, but what I'm not gonna zonk is what's underneath the hood. On the Wild Track trim, 
you do get standard the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. That's the bigger motor. The other engine available on a Bronco, full-size Bronco, is a 2.3 liter EcoBoost. That's a four-cylinder turbocharged engine. So with our twin turbocharged V6, we have 330 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque. You got a 10-speed automatic, two-speed transfer case. You got that fully five-link, multi-independent suspension. And if you're wondering, well, what are MPGs? You're looking at the wrong vehicle. You might as well look at a Bronco Sport. That might be up your alley if you're trying to maximize MPGs. In this wild track, with the 35-inch tires, it's 17 in the city, 17 on the highway, and you could tow up to 20, excuse me, 3,500 pounds. Now, when I told you about approach angle, remember, approach angle is how much clearance do we have at the front of the business. That's 29 degrees approach departure is over 33 degrees at the rear. So lots of room, lots of power, but why don't we go ahead, let's fire up this Bronco and hear what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside this eruption green Bronco Wild Track. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I've been looking for a Bronco. I'm really digging this one. I guess the bottom line is how much is it? Well, let me just tell you that base entry level into the Bronco world has an MSRP of right around $30,000. The Wild Track is MSRP $50,000. And then, of course, you have the other trims in between but let's see what you get for the money if you want to go wild track to the removable door panels so like i said those door panels come off i like the way they went two-tone i'm not normally a tan interior kind of guy but there's just enough light tan color to break up what could be a very boring door panel you do have the exterior color on the door panel i thought that was a smart touch the flat metallic gray on the door handle with that diagonal design and then you are going to get the cargo net pocket which most removable doors come with like on the wrangler it looks small don't worry you don't have to go just regular cheeseburger you can go all in checkers big buford and put a small fry in that cargo net that's what i'm talking about now going from the door panel to the dash they bring that two-tone style in. I like the way they have a simple Bronco name stamped in this center console area of the dash. You got your B for Bronco AC vents, your oh crap panel to grab onto or to get in and out of, and then you get to the center stack, nicely organized. We have our buttons across the front to lock the front diff, the rear diff, obviously shut the traction control off, nice rubber buttons, and then working your way down, what do we got? We got 12 inches. 12 inches of visual pleasure. Sync 4, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Let me show you some of the other things. We could go into the apps. You bring up your apps. It's got that split screen setup that I think is really cool because you could go through and then jump. Like if you want to show your off-road status and how the power is being sent to all four wheels, you could have that displayed. Or you could go pitch and roll. Don't be a pitch. Show the pitch and roll. You got trip, phone access, and then you can bring up your navigation. Go back here. Now your navigation is back to full. If you want this up, we're rocking out to 80s on 8. I could go into my features. We have zone lighting, full 360 degree lighting. You just hit the screen where you want it to light up exterior wise, and it's LED lighting. Of course, we have our towing and that whole tow list. We go into normal settings. I want to show you one thing here display. This is kind of cool. We go into mode. Now I can make it be nighttime. I actually prefer the nighttime because it's this nice dark blue. Doesn't that look good? So I'm going to leave it on there. And like I said, just very intuitive, very easy to use. Let me throw it into reverse. There's our backup camera with your trajectory. We got 360, nice and large. And we got more angles if you want. Look at that. 
takes up the whole screen. And you got your backup uh, protection with your senses, uh, all your sensory stuff in the rear bumper. Look at that. I can even see how old those tires are on that SUV right there. And then we put it right back in the park. I like the way the map looks, don't you? In that nice nighttime feature, we're located right there. We have an engine start stop button, easy to get to. They shaped it just like the headlight. We got our actual volume controls. I got forward facing camera, you just hit that. Now we're looking out the front, easy. It doesn't need to be any harder than that. We could shut off that, uh, that pesky auto start stop feature. Now one thing I'm gonna zonk is because of the chip shortage, we have dual climate, but it does not show on the, on the actual knob here. And that's a problem because as I have the screens up, if I adjust it, it doesn't show. I actually have to get rid of that. Now I could see what the temperature is that I'm setting it to up top. Just something to know that you are missing something when you get these regular knobs. It should have LED displays. We do have USB-C, USB-A, and enough room for six Twinkies. I like the way they're doing these Bronco plates with the VIN number and everything. It tells you where it was built. You got another oh crap panel for the passenger. We got the shifter with the Bronco for the 10 speed automatic. And then there's that goat modes. Go over any terrain, easy to go from two high, four low, four automatic or four high. And then I'll show you more of the modes when you come to the business end. Two cup holders. I'm really digging how they went with an actual Bronco key fob. And then you got your remote start. The one thing I'm not in love with, I actually like better on the two door, are the, sw the switch gear for the windows. The one with the four doors, it looks like a JC Whitney catalog piece. Close with this one, but not too bad. You can adjust your mirrors. This armrest, I hate. And I don't say that a lot, but I'm zonking the armrest. It's just bland. It's just like, what is it? It's just a place to put your arm. How about some stitching? How about some of this two-tone material? Wouldn't you agree? Open it up though. You got a nice little pretzel tray. You know, those little tiny pretzel rods. And then easily you could put, I would say, five bags of Doritos and get a variety pack. Cool Ranch, get your original, get your extra spicy, whatever you want. Just make sure you have some napkins so people don't get their cheesy fingers, fingerprints all over the seats. Speaking of the seats, this one does have the optional vinyl seats. It's a faux leather with the Bronco name on it. I like the stitching, the two-tone, manual seat adjustments for the passenger and the driver. Why? Because they're removable. That would just be one more thing that you'd have to take apart are the wires. Removable panels, easy to do by just pulling on the levers here. And we have the auxiliary switches to add all sorts of power equipment. Whether we want a winch, extra lighting, maybe one of those uh, train horns or something like that. I'm six feet tall and I'm swimming in space. If you need more space, say you're 10 feet tall, just take the panels off and ride with your head past the window. Just make sure you wear sunglasses or you might get a bug right in your eye. But why don't you come over here? I want to show you behind the wheel of the Bronco steering wheel in this eruption green wild track. All right, guys, here we are, business time behind the wheel. Now, one thing that this does have are Bronco all-weather floor mats. Those are good for an extra five extra horsepower. And when comparing this to a Wrangler, I love the way the Bronco comes with a nice size dead pedal. There's no dead pedal in a Wrangler. So it's kind of hard to brace yourself when you're off-roading. You do have your manual seat controls. They're easy to figure out and get comfortable. Like I said, I got plenty of headroom here. Steering wheel, leather all the way around. I wish they would have done some contrast stitching, but I do love that Bronco logo, the flat gray finish, easy and finger, no fingerprints on these flat black rubber buttons, manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, and then the dash, I am gonna zonk it. That analog speedometer is pointless, absolutely pointless. It looks sorta of on the cheaper side of things. You do get a nice large digital display, which is not your conventional setup, but what's awesome is, is watch when you go through the different modes. So I'm gonna twist the ring on the GOAT mode selector. You have Eco, Sport, obviously it's adjusting the 4x4 system, slippery when wet mode, mud and ruts, sand, and Baja. I like Baja. I wish that I lived in an area right now where we have some Baja. And as you can see, it says off-road use only, but I'm gonna go ahead 
and twist it all the way back to sport because that's where I like to keep it. Other than that, you could display other information as well. It's just very awkward kind of setup. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in the back seat. Have never been the back seat of a two-door Bronco. Let's see how much room you have for a couple passengers in the back. All right, guys, back seat time. And I'll be honest, it's a little cumbersome getting into the back seat. The good news is once you're back here, there's actually tons of space. And I know that my five foot three mother-in-law, we would have to be giving her a little bit of a boost with a push to get from ground level into this back seat area. But as you can see, tons of room here. Seats are actually pretty comfy. The only thing is, is that really the only place for an armrest is up here. You do have cup holders on both sides, but it's literally a hole just in the plastic uh, fender area. But other than that, it is nice to have this kind of room. And it does show that if you have a couple people, you could take them on a haul. Plus, what's nice is you do have a home power source and two USB ports in the back here. What's kind of weird is that they literally had to put a name. It says no step. I don't know why they did that. I guess people would step on this, but it just, I don't know. That kind of looks like institutionalized no step. Like, do we need warning labels all over the place? Maybe we do. Interesting to be and to see what it would be like without the panels. And we will bring you a review with the panels off. But you know what? Let's see how much cargo area is in this two-door Bronco to see if you could haul what you need to haul. All right, guys, cargo area time. Of course, just like other Broncos that we've shown on Rady's Ridge, you have that swing out door. Obviously, if you're parallel parked, that's gonna be a little bit of an issue. Plus, you also have the ability of just lifting up that rear glass. What you're gonna be greeted to is not a ton of space. It's about 12 cubic feet of space. The good news is though, is you get a little bit of Twinkie storage. You could actually put two boxes of Twinkies, hide those underneath. Other than that, not a lot of rear storage, but you can fold the seats down. Now, it is interesting though. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull up on this cloth tag here. That's gonna fold down the headrest in a very interesting way. And then you're just gonna drop the seat. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, is that it? Is that how they go down? Yes and no, and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna come around to the passenger side. And what we're gonna do here is you actually can move the bottom cushion out. So I'm moving the bottom cushion out, just a tad here. And then now you can see how the seat goes down. So on both sides, you could do that. And that would obviously give you more room. Very creative how they did that. But it's still, it's flat, but as you can see, it's on a different level. So are you gonna zonk that? Are you not gonna zonk it? Let me know in the comment section. I'm kinda, I'm on the fence because buy, you know, when you buy a two-door Bronco, obviously you're not looking for maximum space or you would buy a four-door Bronco. Is that good enough? Should they have done something else? Put it in the comment section, but you know what? We're not gonna worry about that right now. I wanna go ahead, if you're ready, I'm ready. We got the Bronco, we got the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Let's go on throttle in this Bronco Wild Track. All right guys, we're in this 2022 Ford Bronco Wild Track. Right away, I love the view out the windshield. It's got a classic rectangle shaped windshield and it looks just so freaking unique going down the road, especially the two door version. I'm very excited about how nice of a driving vehicle this is, especially when it comes to visibility with the height that we have, plus with how smooth it is. I think that's the biggest difference between this, say a, um, a Wrangler, or even a 4Runner TRD off-road, TRD Pro off-road, is you're gonna have a smoother ride. Now, of course, because of the removable roof, you do have some wind noise. And because of those 35 inch off-road tires, you definitely have some road noise. But if you are actually looking for the look and the capability of a desert runner, this really is the one because it comes standard exactly the way you see it went. That 2.7 liter over 300 horsepower 
the electronic locking diff, the front diff that locks, two-speed transfer case, the fender flares, the whole nine yards. One of the things I'm very happy to report is I'm digging the faux leather on the seats. The two-tone looks good. They're very comfortable, very supportive. And I think the other big thing on the inside is a dead pedal. Something that I've always been curious why a Wrangler doesn't have a dead pedal. Let me know if you know, because I have no idea. And it's just nice to kind of support yourself, especially when you are going off-road. But I'm going to switch it into sport mode. You're just going to turn that goat mode selector, normal to sport. And then we are going to go on throttle in this wild track. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Here we go. On throttle, here we go. Gets the power to the ground. This is where many people that I've talked to that have the 2.3 liter, they wish they would have got the 2.7 twin turbo V6. Let me know if you have a 2.3 liter EcoBoost and how you feel about it. The one good thing is you could get it with a manual if that's what your choice is. But um, I do like the way this has gobs and gobs of power, especially down low. And especially for such a big tired vehicle, tire vehicle, it really has plenty of get up and go. Getting to all the controls is very easy. It's well laid out. I do have to zonk the center console. It, it feels very cheap especially where the switch gear are for the windows. And the dash is not for me. I don't know why they have that analog speedometer like I pointed out before. They should have just made the digital screen larger and just left it at that. I think that's a cost cutting feature to uh, have that speedometer there so that you have a smaller screen. But other than that, very nice to, to cruise down the road in very usable and I feel like it's not too high where if you're of shorter stature you would have an issue getting in and out of the Bronco Wild Track. Steering feels good that whole independent suspension really shows the advantages over a Wrangler when it comes to handling and ride quality but let's go on throttle here we go passing the Amazon truck And obviously this thing is not a speed demon, but in the right situation, it's gonna be tons of fun desert running through your favorite off-road area, for sure. All right, one of the things I wanna do is I wanna get on the highway because I know a lot of people are gonna use this as a daily driver or you're gonna to need to take the highway to get to your off-road area. I wanna just showcase how smooth the drives and of course the suspension those Bilstein dampers they do a great job with this Bronco and what I mean by that is it's not really bouncy I'm not bouncing all over the place and when you go into a turn it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall over like a first-gen Explorer so those are good things when it comes to handling and then you got the different modes which is awesome and allows you to really take advantage of all the different abilities and capabilities of this particular vehicle. But it really has one heck of a presence on the road as you're driving down the road. You know, going down the highway, the nice thing is when you gotta pass, you just get on throttle. On throttle, here we go. Just put the smile on your face. Not even so much from the on throttle, but for what this vehicle stands for, I think it's just, it's cool that the Bronco name is back and the way that they did the styling on it, I personally fell in love with, especially the two door. Four door, I'm gonna pass, but two door, this is obviously where I would put my money. But going down the highway, just very smooth over the transitions of concrete and asphalt. And then you're getting all the safety features as well. Right now I'm doing about 68, 
And the wind noise really isn't that bad knowing what you're getting into. But hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel of driving this through the asphalt jungle. We are going to eventually take this off-roading, but let's go ahead, get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. It's been another great day with Big Bertha. Let me know what you think. If this is the way that you would spec out your Bronco if you were buying one, or if you would go with one of the other trims, let me know exactly in that comment section how you would do it. And if you're wondering, well, what's the whole backstory to this Bronco, especially as we call her Big Bertha, I'm gonna leave the link to that video explaining how this Bronco came to be at the end of this one. And definitely stay tuned because this is not the last that you're gonna see a Big Bertha. We have some more reviews heading your way to show you what this vehicle is all about. But until we meet again, if you're new on the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Definitely got to give it up to the person that makes this all possible. And it's not me. It's Lori with that camera, working it like a champ. Show her some love in that comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you're doing. Just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.